Hello. Today we are getting to know a new type of edging. I found it on a Czech site. It is called Mirahelka. I will share the link to the author with you. The photo tutorial seems rather detailed, but for some reason I haven't mastered it for the first time, which has inspired me to shoot a video lesson. This time I've decided to combine two topics and to show you how to make a frame, one more type of frame. When we were just starting, our frames used to be rather primitive, but the more we get to know, the more refined and elegant the frames look. So today I feel like making a frame for a panel picture with edging. So let's combine a frame and Mirahelka edging. So, as you see, these two articles differ from each other a little. Here we have sunk the very picture in a little, while the second panel picture is more flat. It is up to you which variety to choose for yourself. So how we start making a panel picture? We make a regular workpiece, you already know how to make it. The only thing is that this time I have glued the tubes in couples. The intervals between them are very small, half an inch or a little more. In order to keep the tubes rather close to each other when we weave a few rows. 6-8 rows of the very frame. The tubes have to be doubled and they have to be long, because the edging is rather complicated and, required, and it requires long tubes. Look, the tips left from that lens are very short, as we know it is very inconvenient to edge the very short tips. That's why the tips have to be left to make edging easier. That's why this length of tubes, 25-30 cm, is optimal. I'm not going to repeat how to weave the frame itself. You already know it. We weave it in a regular rope, or you can weave it in the technique of printed cotton. Here I have tried it. Here is one more panel picture where I have applied printed cotton weave. I have tried using printed picture here, but the experience is not very successful. There are some sp sports, so there is not much to share about. I will share my experience with you when it is more positive. So, so far let's talk about napkins. It is a draft of a workpiece. So, we weave into the technique of a regular rope. Here is a view of the Zaporozhye. You can decorate with a volumetric rope in the middle, but there is none here. You see there is a volumetric rope in the very beginning and the rest is woven in the technique of a regular rope. Here is a four tube rope in between, then three rows in the technique of regular rope again, and then I have lifted the tubes as if I were weaving a basket, and woven two rows more. This way we are getting a picture sunk inside a little, like here. I mean that the frame will rise over the picture a little. So, everything is ready for edge making. Before we start weaving, we have to moisten the tubes and to soften them like this. It is obligatory. If you weave with dry tubes, the edging will be fragile. I have moistened them once, but it is better to do it once again. Because there is a printed picture inside, I don't understand yet why my stains come from. So I cover the picture and sprinkle the tubes once again. Actually, I moistened them just a minute ago, but they get dry very fast, that's why it is better to repeat the procedure. Now I can start weaving. 
The first stage. We bend the moistened and softened tubes toward inside. Here we leave some gap for finishing the row. And bend the couples toward inside, like this, placing them parallel to each other. This way. We place the couples of tubes toward inside. Try to place the tubes close to each other. For me there was one more problem in the photo tutorial. The weaver was weaving in the opposite direction. Not the way I do, left to right, but on the opposite, from right to left. Maybe that's why I've got lost. And there is one more scene why my first experience was unsuccessful. I didn't notice that the tubes had to be placed parallel to each other. If they come across one another, the pattern turns out completely different. That's why it is very important to place the tubes close to each other, but not one onto another. And this way we continue up to the end of the row. These tubes interfere a little, so we move them aside. We are going to pull them a little if they unbend. There is no big deal. And place the tube nearby. Like this. So we have reached the last stitch in our first stage. We have specially left some gap, so now we draw two tubes through it and place them parallel to each other. They lie well with no breaks because they are wet and soft. So the first stage is finished. Now all the couples of tubes look toward inside, the next stage. We take a couple of tubes and pull it through the nearest gap over the tubes looking toward inside. I draw them one by one very carefully. Make sure that they lie parallel and close to each other instead of coming across. At first I take the tube from inside and then the one from outside. Very carefully. Take the next couple. Soften it once again like this. The tubes are made with newspapers and painted with water alcohol mordant mixed with water. Besides, I have added some primer and some varnish and have gotten a kind of cocktail like this. The tubes are flexible enough. If you moisten and soften them, they don't break. I believe that it is thanks to primer and a spoon of varnish. Though the tubes are made of newspapers, but they don't contain any letters. They are made of printing remainders with no letters on it. So the second stage is quite clear. And this we up to the end of the row in circle.